One of the wildest vehicles you could ever imagine. Complete one-off, tube chassis, 40-inch tires, combination of everything off-road, all packed into one package that tries to excel at every aspect there is. Custom-built chassis, all fully fabricated, you know, Corvette motors. Cross between a trophy truck and a rock crawler. The idea is merge those two and make it do both go fast in the desert and do the rock canyons as well as possible. It's 800 horsepower, it's all-wheel drive, it's big 300M axles, it's bead locks, it's, it is the most manly thing in the dictionary. The birth of King of the Hammers represented a shift in thinking for how off-road race cars were built and by design resulted in the creation of a new competitor. Mixing the talents, tricks, and disciplines of the already existing spectrums of off-road competition. These would come to be known as the Ultra 4 car. An unlimited form of race car with virtually their only limitations being safety requirements. These four-wheeled Swiss Army knives at racing, their concept originally born at the hands of KOH founders Dave Cole and Jeff Knoll, would pave the way for an entire national series and explosion of new drivers across the country, all vying for their spot at the top of the King of the Hammers. You know, we build these things to rock crawl first and foremost, desert race, short course, hill climb, you name it. The Ultra 4 car is like the Swiss Army knife of the off-road world. It's built to be able to do anything and do it well. Yeah, an Ultra 4 vehicle is a vehicle that is custom built to go slow through rocks and go fast through the desert. These are vehicles that are designed to steer tight, like our spider line axles. They can steer 50 degrees. Take all of your money, light it on fire, and put big tire on Starting from their inception in 2007, the Ultra 4 car would grow from modified garage rock crawlers to full-blown purpose-built race cars, designed specifically for this style of racing from the ground up. They were tasked with surviving hundreds of miles of desert at high speed, followed by miles of the biggest, baddest rock canyons Mother Nature could muster. Some were built in home garages, others in specialized fabrication shops. From $30,000 to $300,000, they would all find their origins in the hammers. So what's the damage? If you got bones with what I said, I As with any growth, comes evolution. And along with the Ultra 4 car itself, the off-road industry would evolve to meet the demands of KOH, while simultaneously sculpting the future and expansion of Ultra 4 racing as a whole. It's this 180 mile course loop of rocks and desert and silt and sand and everything you can throw at it and it's all who can get their fastest, you know, get to the finish line first. The rowdiness of the rocks and the rage of the desert. King of the Hammers is an ultimate test 
of man and machine. I think it's one of the hardest one day races in the world. It's a combination of all the things that your vehicle and your skill needs to, to uh, do this race. King of the Hammers is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's 100 miles an hour plus in the desert, the biggest rocks you could ever dream about crawling up. I mean, people would look at the rock trail and be like, they don't even want to hike up the thing. It's so crazy. The most extreme test field across rock, desert, whoops. Uh, and the cars in King of the Hammers are the, the, the top end of performance for desert racing globally. The title of King would not come easily with drivers needing to qualify for entry at events across the country. Paired with the overwhelming challenge of KOH itself, it would surely be a title not given, but earned. So the payoff in winning is changing minds, changing perception. In 2012, a tire company called Nitto, Nido, Nido, Nitro, comes to the dry lake bed of Johnson Valley to compete. People aren't so sure. They, they take a step back. Wait a sec, we know the Nito guys. They don't know how this place works. That only challenges us. Because you're looking at high speed and you are looking at four wheel drive, you're testing just about any automotive part you can think of at King of the Hammers in a way that there's nowhere else in the world that you can test it like that. As far as proving grounds go, has got to be the best of the best in the world. That's where we test Airlocker CE. Because of RD99, the racers got larger tires and larger motors and heavier GVMs to match those bigger axle shafts. And pretty soon we needed a heavier, more race-driven version of the product. That launched us into the CE development or competition edition development, which was a three year long ground up engineering study into how we could build a better motorsport differential. This is the toughest one day race in the world, so it's the ultimate product test bed for us. So we're working with the racers out here on the lake bed. They're, you know, we're working with them for prototype vehicles, prototype winches, you know, so we can really prove out the technology before we release it to the public. So a lot of the testing we've done out here, because the terrain is so difficult from, you know, we've done potted control packs, we put extra engineering into our wireless remotes so they can take the abuse of this varying terrain offers. It has to work, it has to be dependable, reliable, and our, that's what our brand is. And if you look through all the race cars out here, you know, our brand presence is over 80% because that's what, our, what we represent, and we proved that to them by coming out here and supporting them. At the time we were testing it in some of the top end competitors in the field in their cars in private. So we didn't reveal who was running it. We just had them out there under test. And it was a fabulous window into how the product could perform when it was put under extreme, extreme test scenarios. There's so much more to this from a cultural standpoint than just the race. I love the fact that a bunch of guys can build something, build whatever they want in their garage. It's a Saturday night. I'm gonna, this is my dream of what I think is gonna work and I'm gonna build it and I'm gonna go test it. And maybe it'll go 10 feet, maybe they'll win the race. I don't know. That's what I love about Ultra 4 Racing. I love the fact that I'm not restricted by rules. I can, it's whatever my imagination can dream up, I can race it. It's touted as the toughest one-day off-road race in the world, and for good reason, it is. It is the most difficult thing I'd have to say I've ever done in my life in a car, by far. Nothing quite compares to it. I think Baja, Dakar, other off-road events like that, they're just, they don't have the elements of destruction that King of the Hammers does. It's just, it's just so much thrown at you all in one day, and you have to be a well-rounded driver. You can't just cross over and jump in one of these things and go in King of the Hammers. I don't care how many times you've won Dakar or Baja. This is a sport unlike anything else in the world, 
and you know the guys that have been doing it the longest are the ones that are still here time and time again progressively finishing at the top and constantly learning this has been an evolution from the beginning cars they all started off you know really as rock crawlers and we tried to blend them and figure out what the best way to be the fastest out in Johnson Valley is and they're kind of what you see today but the cool thing is there's not one formula there's not one car that is better or always winning it's just it depends on the event it depends on the venue and that's what's so cool about ultra four it's just you know all this ingenuity that goes into these things and you know the blood sweat and tears we put in to build the best machine possible